Webheads, this week's top 10 most anticipated has some top tier books that you're not going to want to miss. Hey, all my webheads out there, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. And fans, I am your host, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you my top 10 most anticipated comic books. This is for August 26th, 2020. That's right, fans, it's never too early to start that pull list for next week. And hopefully, this list helps you make decisions on what comic books to buy. So, guys, at any time, if you would like to hit that join button right there on my home screen, it does help support the channel it's much appreciated and of course thanks to everyone for watching the channel so guys let's kick off this most anticipated list with the hot seat that's right guys the hot seat book goes to lock and key issue one this is this uh spin-off series from the original series i think this is just a type of one shot as we get one of the lot kids, they wind up going back into like 1915 and and try to do something in the in the in the lock mansion and key house and whatnot. I really love the original series. Of course, nothing can replace that original series. But when it comes to lock and key. I like it. You know, it's still written by Joe Hill. And so I'm curious to see what this one really has to offer. Now, of course, this purchase is determined based off of how many comics I buy this particular week. But most likely, I'll probably buy this one because, man, there is a lot of great comics coming out this week. And there wasn't anything really where I was like, ah, I don't want this, but maybe. So this one had to be on there. So this one's 32 pages, $4 book. All right, next, kicking it off now with number 10. And number 10 goes to Chew. This is issue two. Uh, this is titled The First Course Part Two. Now, if you guys read the original Chew series, you're going to love this book. However, if you did not read the original Chew series, you might find yourself a little bit lost. So I definitely say go out there. Read the original series, and I guarantee I think you'll like it. It's a lot of fun. Great artwork done by John Lehman and Rob Gullery, who does this series. Uh, Agent Chu is obviously has a family and his sister is the evil one and Chu is the good one and they're kind of meeting up at the beginning of this particular issue and it looks like Agent Chu has a new partner and it looks like he's going to hate him. This is going to be a great and wild ride. Hopefully fans of this series will check it out. All right, next, moving on to number nine. Now, guys, just a little bit of a heads up. Sometimes I do discuss spoilers uh, when I talk about the top 10 most anticipated of books, of things that happened in previous books. So if you don't want to see a book that's particular talked about, uh, just pause the video or whatnot. But there are spoilers here. These books have been out for a little while. Okay, next, we're going on to Wonder Woman, issue 761. Tamaki and um, Janin are the ones that have been on this book since 759, and they've kicked it off beautifully. I think it is a well-written book. It gives you kind of a new jumping-on point for Wonder Woman, and uh, she's She's going against what you would think Maxwell Lord, but she's not because she thought this because everyone is being possessed and Maxwell Lord has this mind control type of thing. Well, at the end of issue 760, Wonder Woman wound up getting mind controlled herself and she just wakes up and all around her are like dead soldiers and destroyed buildings and she doesn't know what has happened. Really nice book, well written, great artwork. I definitely recommend Wonder Woman if you guys have fallen off the title. Check it out from 759. All right, moving on to number eight. We're talking about Batgirl issue 48. This is a Joker war tie-in. The Joker it was doing battle against Barbara, and uh, Barbara is basically... <laughs> she's basically back to where she started, back at the killing joke, where she is basically paralyzed. We saw the Joker just... I guess disrupt her back implant to where she can't walk. 
She is stronger than she was before, so she's learned to kind of get by. So when we left at the end of the last issue, they're both left on the floor. My only problem with this book is we kind of don't know where the timeline is, where Joker is supposed to be in all this when he's dealing with Batman at the same time. And then Barbara is in Nightwing where she just got her leg gashed open, uh, teaming up with Punchline, or where Nightwing was teaming up with Punchline. So there's a couple little time you know, discrepancies there. But nevertheless, if you kind of push that to the side, it's a really well-written book. And I, I, I kind of like this tie-in. So go ahead and check that out. All right, next. Moving on to number seven. Great book by Jeff Lemire. This one is Family Tree. This is issue eight. Uh, great, great book when it comes to originality about people turning into trees. Well, there was this one little girl by the name of Meg. She had the tree disease or the tree apocalyptic disease, and she transformed into a tree. And she's one of the real, only real living trees that I guess went through this entire process. And we can see that whatever trees are out there, they can communicate with each other. And now Meg is trying to explain her transformation. And then Grandpa Judd is trying to stop the people that are going after or trying to capture the tree people. It's weird shit, dude. You got to read it. But nevertheless, it's a great book. Very original, interesting artwork. Definitely suggest it if you're looking for something different. All right, next. Coming in at number six, Red Border, issue four. Conclusion to the series, uh, written by Jason Starr and Will Conrad is the art worst, art artist here. And uh, this has been a great book. I have some kids. They're trying to cross the border because they were escaping some... Um, a type of gang or mafia, Mexican mafia or whatever it is, because they were in the wrong place at the wrong time and something happened. And then they got picked up by some some guy and he's like, oh, come to my house. And they cross the border and they've been held not necessarily hostage, but there's like, oh, you can't leave. You can't leave. And there's really bad stuff that's going on at that particular house. And we saw that our young people escaped their house from those people. And now you got the, the Mexican mafia and then you got these crazy people going after them. And it's just, it's a wild action ride. And I definitely say that if you were to see this in a movie, I think this would be a lot of fun. If you can find issues one through three on the racks, definitely suggest it or just wait for the trade whenever that trade comes out. Here with number five, The Amazing Spider-Man issue 47. Uh, we got Sins Rising. This is part three. Uh, this book is improved for me. It's a much darker tale as it has to deal with the Sin Eater. And the Sin Eater in issue 46 winds up destroying a bunch of bad guys, right? But then they come back alive and they come back as as their sins have been cleansed and they're they just they're all innocent, but now they're like in Ravencroft and stuff like that. And we get to see the Sin Eater basically, I guess, absorb his power their powers and uh it's just insane stuff. So Great book here, and uh, we get to see how he really gets under Spider-Man's skin as well. But this guy is becoming a formidable foe, and this is what I've been kind of looking for when it comes to this book. Now, there may be some people that just don't care about Sin Eater, but this is an interesting story. So I'm like it, liking it, and I'm going to see how the ramifications take place. We also get to see Norman Osborn in this last issue as well, as obviously this is leading into the Green Goblin story, which is the next story arc. All right, so moving on to number four. This one goes to Teen Titans Annual Issue 2. Now, I am very disappointed when it comes to Teen Titans. Obviously, we got word this week if uh, that book wound up getting canceled. Uh, one of the books from DC that's on the chopping block. And I'll leave that video at the end of this one to give you my thoughts on all of DC's situation when it comes to these canceled books. Um, but Batman discovers that the Teen Titans are... 
they they were doing some bad stuff, and obviously it's because of Damien. So Batman's going to make his appearance here and go confront Damien on the whole situation of what's going on. Obviously, this is not a good thing for Damien, and it's not a good thing for Batman. So I'm very curious to see how the relationship is going to be after this issue. So I think this annual is going to have some ramifications here uh, when it's all said and done. This is 48 pages, and it's a $5 book. Great book, though. I'm talking about more cancellations. This is next on the list. Number three, Suicide Squad issue eight. You guys know how I feel about Teen Titans and Suicide Squad. Tom Taylor has a great book here, okay? It has been said that on Twitter, Tom Taylor's like, oh, this was always supposed to be a maxi series. It was always supposed to go be so far. I call BS on that. You don't create all these characters. You don't come out with this plot about the about Deadshot possibly getting killed just to end a series at issue 12 or whatnot. That's my opinion there. I think he had something in order for these characters. We also, you know, in the last issue got introduced to Deadshot's daughter, how he, she wants to be a superhero. I just think there was a larger agenda there and he was cut short and he's forced to close it off now. And then there's like, oh, let's, you know, say something nice, Tom Taylor. Like you meant to be, that's crap. I just call BS on that one. Anyway, it's a good book. I can't wait to see what's going to happen here. Best Suicide Squad I have read in this short run. All right, next, moving on to number two. Book's not getting canceled because this is another really good book. This goes to Daredevil Annual. This is issue one. This is 36-page annual. It's a $5 book. All it says is one more day. Great looking cover here. Daredevil has been nothing short but stellar. It's a fantastic book. Definitely recommend it to all you guys out there. If you have not jumped on, the webheads out there recommended it to me. It took me a long time, but I am happy I'm reading it because it's one of the best Marvel titles out there right now. So check it out, guys. All right, and last but not least... My number one most anticipated comic of the week, and probably yours too, is Three Jokers, Batman Three Jokers, issue one. I think we have all been waiting for this for a very, very long time, as this was announced ages ago, and we have Jeff Johns on the book, and we have Jason Fabic on the artwork, who is a phenomenal artist. I loved him when he did... Uh, the new 52 Justice League artwork, it's always so, so greatly detailed. And um, this is just going to go diving into the myth of the Joker and, uh, and and everything else here in his battles with Batman. And I just can't wait for this story. Whatever it has to offer, I think it's going to be really, really good. So there you have it. Three Jokers. Don't forget to check it out. 48 pages, $7. Don't miss it. There's variant covers as well. And guys, there are my top 10 most anticipated comics of the week. I want to hear in the comments below what are your top 10 most anticipated. And then here are my thoughts right here on what I thought about the cancellations for DC Comics. So until next time, guys, this is Mike Spider Slayer signing off. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.